are making moves today on Fantasy Football, talking about a couple of overachievers. Welcome to this show, brought to you by Norton Denier of Digital Dangers Everywhere. I'm Lauren Shahadi, alongside Dave Richards, starting with a couple of overachievers. Mendenhall, Jerome Harrison, nice numbers. Harrison had that fumble, of course, resulting in seven points for the Bengals, but still. Big deal. Big deal over it, right? Yeah, right. Fantasy owners love what they got at Jerome Harrison this week. We thought on Fantasy Football today that he might be good for around 80 total yards. He blew that out of the water. And Rashard Mendenhall, what can you say about this guy? He ran over a really bad defense. San Diego's run defense is really the pits. But speaking of pits, Mendenhall, Steelers, did a great job. You've got to expect him to keep going at it there for the rest of the year. They had to have loved what they would seen from their former first-round pick. So what happens now when the starting running backs come back? It's two different Willie situations Parker. in each place. Willie Parker's coming back in Pittsburgh, and you've got Jerome Harrison uh, dealing with Jamal Lewis now in Cleveland. Who's the better back? Let's start with Cleveland. If you ask me, it's Jerome Harrison. Jamal Lewis doesn't give the Browns any chance to win. Harrison can put up some yards. He can at least help Cleveland have a semblance of a run game. He can help in the passing game. I think Harrison's going to see a lot of playing time. But in Pittsburgh, Willie Parker still might be the man there. I think the Steelers can't deny that they've got to use Rashard Mendenhall. But that might be more of a split situation than what we might see in Cleveland. I think Harrison is probably going to be the better back overall, assuming Willie Parker comes back. And he's got to come back this week, and he's got you to mean be Mendenhall. healthy. Well, Parker's got to come back for Mendenhall to be average. Okay. The longer Parker is out, the better Mendenhall will be because he'll get all those carries, do a great job. Steelers play the Lions this week. You're going to love whoever runs the ball for them. All right, we'll see how it all works out. But you know what? I'm sitting at my desk just minding my own business, studying some fantasy football notes when I get an IM from Dave Richard. It says, would you like to go to a funeral? And I say, oh, my goodness, you know what's going on? He says, of Darren McFadden's fantasy value. Yeah, that's right. Darren McFadden's fantasy value <laughs> is in the toilet. You can say goodbye to it. If you've got him on your team, you can cut him. Here are four guys, Lauren, that people are wondering, do I hang on to him? Do I drop him? Three of these four, you can go ahead and Which let's, three? let's have the funeral. Well, why don't you guess? All right. All well, right, McFadden, so got, I know for sure. McFadden, Johnson we're going to the funeral. Sure, right? Yeah, look at that. Two fumbles, no McFadden touchdowns. McFadden and Johnson, for sure. Go ahead. Come um, on. I'm going to go with White, too. Linda, you're good, Lauren. Oh, you know your fantasy four. football. Three out of four. Moment of silence for them. That was good. Okay, now, LaDainian Tomlinson, <laughs> let's focus on him because this is a guy that we need to give the benefit of the doubt to, and I know that I've been a very harsh LaDainian Tomlinson critic. Had a bad, bad matchup last week. He's going to get the bye week this week. His ankle should be fine. Let's see what he does starting in week six. If you've got him, hold on to him. You don't trade for him. You don't trade him away. Just keep him on your roster and wait and see what you get because he, after all, it's LaDainian Tomlinson. He's got the potential to put up huge numbers. We've already seen that, obviously. Okay, we know in fantasy football it's all about matchups, right? Well, here are a couple guys on Easy Street for the next couple weeks. Dave, what do you think? Well, here's what we decided to do. Name of this segment is Move Makers, right? So right. people are making moves. We're at, uh, you know, four games in. That's about a third of your standard fantasy football season. Might be time to make a trade. So let's take a look at some of the teams that have a great schedule coming up. You look at Chicago's schedule. All four of the defenses they play after the bye, terrible against the pass. Jay Cutler should be high on everybody's wish list right now, and you can get him on the cheap because he's on bye this week, and a team will want to get something good in value for him in exchange. The yellow matchups here, Lauren, those yeah. are tough matchups among their five or four games. But if you go around those matchups, they still have a really good schedule. So Buffalo, Philadelphia, I think you're pretty much starting every stud on the Eagles anyway. But you can go ahead and count on them to have big, big games. And, of course, Indianapolis, everybody's starting them. Look at Carolina's schedule for a second. They've got Washington, Tampa hey, Bay, and Buffalo. Hey, this, is a, this is a team that is going to rely on the run for their next three games. It would not shock me at all if they go 3-3 three and three heading into that game against Arizona. Arizona's good against the run. Maybe the Panthers will have something going by then. They might be 4-3 wow. going into that game against the Saints. That'll be a much tougher matchup for them. Saints run defense has really been good. You look at Jacksonville's schedule over the next five. Really like what you see from them in Seattle, too. If they can get Matt Hassel back, back and healthy, that passing game should be really strong. You mentioned strong. the Saints defense looking good, or defense looking good yeah. right? You would have thought it would be the Saints offense against that Jets defense, but the, the Saints the defense, defense really up. Said, well, Mark Sanchez kind of gave the game away a little bit there, too. But, yeah, really one of the big surprises of the year is the Saints defense doing just as good as their offense. Hey, you know what? It goes both ways. These are the guys with – not so great schedules. I'm talking about the Raiders and the Titans. It ain't pretty, Dave, is we're, it? We're beating a dead horse here. Both of these teams probably aren't going to go anywhere this year, and especially the case of Tennessee, that slow start where they go 0-4, really disappointing. But you've got Chris Johnson on your roster. 
at least he's got some good matchups here coming up against Indianapolis and New England, two teams that aren't great against the run. You can start him. Everybody else in Tennessee, big question mark here. You're not sure whether or not you can use them. You've got to play the matchups. And Oakland, are we really using anybody in Oakland? I mean, I'm here to mourn. I'm mourning, Lauren. Morning. Brett Favre's not mourning. What do you think of that game? Pretty good. Yeah, he you know, was pretty good. I was thinking if you worked at the Metrodome last night and today, you're thinking, I want to be scheduled. These are awesome games, obviously, baseball. And but I'm working in the best football. spot in the world. I'm working here on CBSSports.com next it's to true. you. I mean, I'm just saying. For Dave Richard, I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll see you next time.